Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Thank you for braving the bitter cold to be with us. Uh, Welcome to also all those who are joining us online or visiting with us today. We're happy to have you here. Uh, You'll see in the front of your bulletin we have announcements and upcoming events. Today is Penny Sunday, so we'll be uh, collecting pennies. There's a jar in the back there. I know there are penny bags that have been made that people can put their coins in. So we'll talk a bit more about that in, during the children's message. Also today, this afternoon, is uh, my official installation here at Trinity. And so what will happen is at 3 o'clock, uh, Bishop Collins will be with us this afternoon. And so everyone is welcome to attend, uh, either online or in person. And then there will be some uh, brief, uh, not brief, uh, small refreshments afterwards as well. So I hope you can be there. Um, also, we're continuing with our uh, McAllisterville Ministerium online Lenten services. And so that will, the next service will air tonight on the Facebook page and online at 7 o'clock. And you can view those anytime that you'd like. We are in the midst of our flood bucket challenge. We've already had a lot of donations in the back there. Uh, we might have filled a flood bucket already in the first week. So um, I will look at it later this week, and uh, if we're all done, then I'll add another bucket in the back, and we'll keep donating items. And this is through the season of Lent uh, until Easter Sunday on April 17th. Uh, If you'd like to just make your own bucket, there are instructions in the back that you can just grab those as well. We're also continuing to uh, raise money Uh, to donate for, uh, to support Ukrainian refugees, and so you can find out about that more in your insert. Um, Also, I think in your bulletin, there's a little uh, why I feel welcome at Trinity, and so if you want to take a couple minutes after worship to write down how you feel welcomed here and put them on the bulletin board that Sonia set up, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Are there other announcements? Okay, great, yeah. I want to say it's April 15th, maybe might be the early registration, something like that, yeah. So yeah, thank you, yeah, for Camp Mount Luther. Any other announcements? You can find out more. Be sure to read your bulletins. You can take them with you after worship, so you have your announcements right there. Please rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If if you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. 
says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace to you. Amen. The abundant grace of Christ Jesus, the rich mercy of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal God, it is your glory always to have mercy. Bring back all who have erred and strayed from your ways. Lead them again to embrace in faith the truth of your word and to hold it fast. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you 
this land to possess. But he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. We shall read the Psalm 27 responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter. Hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary and raise me high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Therefore, I will also boast in the Lord. I will exalt in the Lord. Let the Lord rejoice. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God, of my salvation. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living.
Our second reading is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in the shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. It is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. All of the children are invited forward for a children's message. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How's everybody doing? Where would you like to sit? This side, this side. This looks good. (laughs) <laughs> All right, we can stand too, that's fine. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> so, I mentioned this morning that today is Penny Sunday, and that's where the church has been collecting pennies and coins, and they usually go to different missions or, or places that we want to donate to help people. You see that, that jar there? It's under the pew, it's got lots of pennies. I don't want to try to lift it, I think it's probably pretty heavy. So, but there it is. So we've been raising pennies, but we haven't uh, decided where we're going to give those pennies yet. I thought that for now, for this year, it'd be really important to give to the people that are struggling in Ukraine. So you might have heard that there is a war going on, that there's lots of fighting, and that people have to leave their homes. And so it's children and families, and they have to leave to stay safe. And so they need our help. So we have these penny bags here that you can collect pennies through and bring them in. And what will happen is all of that will go to our response to help those families and to help those kids. And you'll see here that they're sunflowers, right? Well, sunflowers are the national flower of Ukraine. And so... Uh, they represent being thankful. That's what sunflowers represent is being thankful. And so we can be thankful to God that we're lucky enough to be safe and to be here with our families. And we say thanks by giving all this stuff that we have extra, giving to those who need it. So we're going to pass out these. So if you want to pass them down or just grab one of those and make sure that everybody's got one. Thank you. One, two, three. Three, four. And that way, uh, we'll be able to help them. And so you can bring pennies. There's pennies in the back here as well. You'll see in the back there, you can put them. So let's pray. Dear God, we ask that you be with our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, with those who have to find safety, Please bless these bags that we can fill them with pennies and coins. We thank you so much for all that you give us. Help us to share those gifts with others. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. Head back. There you go.
the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the 13th chapter. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. It's kind of odd that Jesus chooses to identify himself as a chicken, don't you think? Chickens aren't particularly glorious or strong or intelligent. If Jesus is going to be an animal, he's more likely to be shown as a lion or an eagle or a lamb. These animals are majestic, at least the lion and the eagle, powerful. But that's not the image that we have today. Today, Jesus chooses to be a chicken, a mother hen specifically, a mother hen gathering her chicks together underneath her wings. Jesus pleads, Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather your children together as hens gather their brood under their wings, and you were not willing. Now, I suspect that many of you have some experience with chickens out here in the country. Some of you own your own chickens. I personally love farm fresh eggs. The taste is just it's just not comparable to the stuff in the stores. Not too long after I joined Greg's family, they bought some chicks to raise in their backyard. And we've enjoyed many of their eggs, and in return, we fed them compost, old jack-o'-lanterns and watermelon rinds. Chickens actually used to be wild beasts that roamed the jungle. They originally were captured for their meat and for their fighting capabilities. Now, we've domesticated them. They roam freely in places, but just around the yard or the farmstead. They rely on us and we on them. It's these kind of domesticated chickens that Jesus identifies himself with. God became something that we could live close to, something that we could grasp. God became human. Unlike chickens, God chose to be near us, to be one of us in Jesus, a human a vulnerable, at times messy and dirty and smelly human. So what if it seems a little undignified for God? 
It's more important to God to be with us, to be close to us, than to be grand or marvelous. As a mother hen, God makes God's self so vulnerable to us and the world, with wings stretched out to gather us in. This position leaves him vulnerable to attack and harm. And it's not like we deserve it for God to be so close to us. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus is lamenting over God's people turning away from God. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing? We've at times hurt Jesus. We've at times hurt each other. We, as a church, at times have turned away from God and not been the best representatives of God's love and desire to be close to all of God's people. We have always not, we have sometimes not always done a good job of extending God's welcoming wing to others. This gesture of outstretched arms is welcoming and loving. Jesus revealed God's essence, which in fact does not seek power, but rather cultivates love. Jesus doesn't demand that we bow in submission. Rather, Jesus wants us to receive him, to gather to him for protection, comfort, and peace. God is trying so desperately to communicate to us that we are loved and accepted exactly as we are. Messy, sometimes dirty and smelly. We are God's creations, and we are loved unconditionally, not because of our own efforts, not because of who we are or who we try to be, but because of who God is an unconditionally loving creator. And we need loving relationships like this, where we feel that we belong now more than ever. That is what I think Jesus wants for us and for the whole world. Jesus wants to gather us into communities of faith and love and belonging. That's what the church can be life-giving, soul-nourishing, sources of strength and healing. This is what Jesus invites us to, to a community of loving and belonging under Jesus' wing. Church is supposed to be a safe place of protection so that we can imagine the life that God is calling us to and the person that God has created us to be. But we haven't always lived up to that invitation. And despite that, God continues to gather us and all people in. When Jesus breaks his body and pours out his blood on the cross, he's giving us God's vital love. God reveals God's self most in the crucified Christ. Look at him. His arms outstretched on the cross, in suffering and pain, but also in love. Martin Luther once said, if we don't look first at the crucified Christ to see God, we are making friends with the devil. Luther saw that God who hangs on the cross in sacrifice and love for us, is the only God who can save us from ourselves and the evil forces in this world. We all receive God's vital love through Christ crucified. It's amazing that Jesus entrusts us with this kind of divine love. We may neglect it. We may fail to see it. 
Maybe we don't handle it as well or share it very well with others. But there are times when we feel and show a glimmer of this vital love of God. And it is miraculous and powerful. Jesus is calling us to the security of God's love so we might know that we are safe. I think the psalm for this morning sums it up wonderfully. It says, One thing I ask of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. Let us pray. Shelter us under your wings, Mother God, and give us the strength to follow you in welcoming others. In Jesus' name, amen. We now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Draw close to the heart of God. We offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God. You create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystems and enhance the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Bring an end to war and violence in Ukraine. Merciful God. You hear us when we cry to you. Attend to those expecting a child and console those who've experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Heal those suffering from the coronavirus. Uphold those who are ill or grieving, especially Dale and Donna, Janelle, Carl, Beth, Denny, Ruby, Polly and her family, and all others we now name. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or confirmation. Empower Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, and parents who share their faith with younger generations. Bless the ministry of the Sunbeam Early Learning Center. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are in ended and who now rest with you, be with the family and friends of Bill Houdeshell. On the final day, gather all of us with them in your loving arms. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of the world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Holy and generous host, 
You set a table where we feast as friends. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God <laughs> for the people of God. Come for the banquet is now prepared. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> <clears throat> 